Hello everybody, Reaper X1 here, back again playing some TerraTech 0.6.0.3, an unstable build. This time I took the to the R&D. I wanted to keep working on my uh, base from my last save and that, but I needed to do some testing, so I figured I'd bring it here and do some building in my last video, and this build video is more about the testing. A little bit of building too, I think. So what I've done is I come here, loaded her up with some resources in order to kind of see what it will hold and how it'll act. Found out I needed more receivers because it took a while to unload my truck. So as you can see, I'm slowly getting the conveyor system set up and worked around and as I go, I find little things here and there that I want to touch up and make better. And looks kind of pretty with them sitting there spinning like that. I have been thinking about shortening up the conveyor system because there's one half of the track that really doesn't need to be there. I just originally made it so it could hold more just to get the resources away from the receivers as fast as possible. So I figure the longer the chain, the more it can move them and do its work along the way. I'm starting to wonder if that is <coughs> a good idea because it does take quite a while for some of them to get to the processing part of the line. But then the whole time it is feeding maybe hundreds <laughs> of chunks of resources through the system so it's one of those things you do have to get it loaded up first before you're really going to get any real major work done out of it. So I think it took maybe a minute or two before it was really starting to stock up the resources like that. Now there is flaws to this system too like with the plumbia it's needed to make every single alloy which is kind of a pain in the bag since it takes quite a bit to set this thing up. So I got it set to hold 10 of each resource before the refinery, plus hold 10 of the finished alloys. So you're looking at 60 chunks of plumbia that can be stored there and waiting, plus another 60 that could have already been made or used up. So you got 120 chunks there just needed just to fill this system. And that's not even with it selling. And that's all of Plumbia ore, I think is what it's called. But it is possible. And someday the alloys will have a use. And by then I'll hopefully have an even better setup. Well, by then the new crafting system will be done. And I think we'll all have better setups by then. I figured I'd set some to sale and see what we get. I was kind of hoping they do like the, I don't know how to explain it, but one would fire the next and the next and the next, kind of like right after another. You're like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Not a very good sound effect, but kind of my idea. They seem to have synced up a little bit. You got three going off at once, and then the other three at the other. And I noticed that some of the resources were slipping by my catcher there, so I'm making it a little bigger. Hopefully, they don't get by it anymore. Right, I'd kind of like to see what it does with that uh, pit full of resources. Preferably all wood, but I know with what I can throw at this system and how far fast it would use the other ones to charge, I could see it there being a stockpile of everything in there for the charging fuels or resources that are used for fuel. But I do have it set up so I can pull whatever of the three out of there the carbide or carbite, the oleus, or the wood, and it can sort them to whatever it needs to go to. 
The only thing I did kind of fail to realize when I initially put in the wood line, uh, the three lines right close to where I am working right now, is I didn't have them set up to actually run into a generator at any time, so they were just going to go around in circles and never do nothing. Somewhere in this video I fix that. And seeing as wood is a mass commodity in here, it's kind of important to make good use of it. The other ones are better, but they're not as not as abundant. So the wood's everywhere. You can find it and get a million chunks of that, and you can charge forever. So that's kind of what I was doing here, <laughs> just collecting up some wood. Get to some chewing. Kind of like this little tech that I got here for harvesting. Now that was a little nicer, eh? Kind of pulled everything right off of there. <coughs> Just doing like a, a preemptive test to see how things are working. Seems like everything's moving along kind of nice. Waiting for that. I might as well build a little bit. Get things figured out. More complete. I think that's about the, as big as I really want to get this base as far as its footprint on the ground. I don't want to make something too big that if I bring it into the game it's going to completely kill the frame rate. I'm not really shooting for a monster base with this just yet. Just a basic, or not a basic, that's a little more than basic, but a base to start with. I made another platform once before that was to be like a starting platform for any base that I would want to make. Never got to really use it because of talks of crafting changes and all the different stuff. And I might have to pull it back out and see what I can do with it. Maybe that'll be the next one. Give me something to work towards. Get back out in the game and have to earn me some money so I can buy it. I think I stuck with common parts too, like all the early stuff that are kind of just given to you. Not the hard to find blocks, if I remember right. Well, the filter, I'll have to craft that, of course, but I think I've only actually found that like twice in the actual on the dispensers. I don't think I've actually found it very much. Crafted it a bunch, just about every other time, but. Really handy block, that's for sure. I like these little drills. I'm not sure if they're completely finished yet. I've noticed they fall off pretty easy. Doesn't take too many shots. They're not as tough as the big ones, which is understandable, but... I haven't really fought with them in this update, though. That was the last update, so they might have been played and tweaked a little bit for better performance. <laughs> yeah, normally I wouldn't use too much armor on the outside of my base. I kind of, I more go towards, uh, let's put firepower there. But seeing as more firepower means more lag, and I'm trying to avoid that and still be um, protected su sufficiently, I guess is a good word. So it's kind of a challenge, I guess myself to make the best thing I can that'll defend itself and I don't have to worry about but won't completely kill the gameplay and for me that's kind of difficult because I get building and I get ideas and I just want to keep building and building make them huge make them monsters and well frame rate goes for a crapper on that <laughs> I was kind of wondering if this would even start slowing things down, but it seems to have uh, held on pretty good. I've had a few little issues where the frame rates drop, but I'm not too sure it was the actual game itself. I've been noticing a little weirdness in my computer, so just running more like a uh, processor than it should at any on startup things like that so I might have some work I gotta do to it itself 
But if you've noticed here that the block painting isn't working 100%, one little trick that I've found that is if you are block painting and you, like with the guns here, if you haven't noticed, I've done it a couple times, and it's not facing the right way when you put it, the block to the next spot you want, drag it off and drag it back. Sometimes it just takes out once, but the more attachment points it has to run on the block you're placing, the more times you may have to move back and forth from the spot you want to off of that and to back. And it will actually, you can watch some of them where it'll keep switching. You won't even have to click, it'll just keep switching around until it gets it. But like I was saying, more attach points, more times you may have to do that, or it might not even work if there's too many. So I found with these cannons it wasn't working like that. But those guns underneath, it was working pretty good. It's one of those things that's not really uh, supposed to be needed because of the way they're working to get the system, but it is a nice little thing to know to deal with the problems that are still there with the block painting. It's like we all know, it is still a new feature relatively, and of course there's going to be some things to get worked out of it. I'm just glad there is a little way to get around it. So I've kind of got to this point, and I was going to continue on and just keep building this wall and squaring it up and just have the front kind of open and do something there for defense. I got another idea for that. But I'm not sure. I might make a parking spot for my harvester. So I could have an extra harvester just sitting there, or even a battle tech. I could probably fit two in there. A harvester right beside, he'd park in there. Maybe a the battle tech I've used for my last uh, run through. How do you like that, eh? Don't you wish you'd harvest that fast? I actually sped that up twice <laughs> just to get it to look like that. I just thought it was funny. And it took a lot longer to do it in real time. So yeah, this part I just kind of wanted to do another check to see if anything could still be improved upon without doing extensive builds, like just uh, fine tune what I've got there. I don't really want to add a whole lot. And as if you could make that out, I just saved it, which is always a good idea. Multiple saves for a thing like this. I think I'm on save seven or eight by the time I got to this point. And yeah, I uh, I always check my after I save by. Uh, pause, restart R&D, find my tech, and if it shows up there, usually it's a pretty good sign that it's going to work for you. In the past, I've had that happen, but then when I go to order my tech from the shop, it won't show up there, So, meaning I can't get those techs into the main game the normal way. I'm not sure if I can actually get them in the game. So that kind of sucks, because there's a couple of my monsters that might not ever make it in there. And they're pretty cool. I'd like to actually have them in my save game I'm working on. So just something to think about because some of the snapshots shots do get bugged out a little bit. And if you save five in a row and you think they're all good and they turn out they're not, and you lose about, well, I think I had uh, 12 hours I lost one time. It pisses you off a little bit. So just heads up. Back up your saves. Check your saves. Do everything you can to save your frustration. But I think I'm going to end this one here. So till next time, everybody, have a good one. Bye.